The Squirrel Rhapsody. Yeah. It's not that well I can see. That's only going to move it. I wish I had a higher zoom lens. Lens. You're boring, Mr. Squirrel. Move. Hello friends and welcome to another episode of the Urban Homesteading Channel, the Traveling Edition. Today we are in uh, wonderful North Carolina, as we've been for the last few months, and we are here to do one very common do-it-yourselfer project, which doesn't involve a build, so it is a, a very good first project for someone that wants to pick up DIY and very useful in uh, saving money and beautifying your home. If today is the first time for you visiting with us, we want to extend you a very warm welcome and invite you to view any of our over 420 videos that we've arranged for your convenience in playlists as we are confident you're going to find something both entertaining and useful. If you have been here before but you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Do subscribe. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. Alright, and we start out here in the beautiful patio of one of the apartments with all the equipment we hope we're going to need for this project. And this is our project. This is a $8, I believe, yep. uh, a, a piece of furniture that we found in, in our local restore that is in need of some serious TLC. It has a little bit of damage on the veneer here and here. And um, there's some on the side, and then there's also down in front as well. But overall, we, we like the way it looks, and it has uh, probably wood that's worth more than eight dollars, right? Oh, yeah, because everything is wood, including the track for the drawer. So, and, uh, no, and you can see this is actual wood, it is not. Uh, I mean, even that, this seems... Yeah, and what I was trying to say was, like, even the track, it's not plastic or metal or anything. It's an actual wooden track. So the whole thing is a solid piece of wood, which is really nice. And definitely a very positive lock on this door. you got to mean it when you want to close it. And it takes so far all stuff here to open this, and so do you. Yeah. <laughs> and the leaf is not... They didn't charge us for the leaf in there. It's no, that's been part of the process. Uh... Because when we purchased this, the thing reeked and reeked and reeked of uh, some kind of mold, mildewy kind of thing, as well as smoke. So it's been out here about three months at this point. Actually, almost four. Uh, so tip number out. one. <laughs> tip number one. If you don't it. want it to smell, make sure that you figure that out in the store. We did, but we didn't thought it was as bad as it was right. when we brought it back. So we knew there was a little smell to it. There was a lot of smell to it. A little, a lot smell to it. <laughs> <laughs> so we brought it here. We let it out, as you can see, air out in in our uh, yeah. patio. Yeah, and this is Tres a covered patio. patio, so it hasn't been exposed to any additional uh, water, rain, or anything of like that. Of course, if we were in Kansas, it would be yeah. totally wet. Here in yeah. Colorado, for some reason, the rain is straight. It's not sideways. Mm -hmm. So... And so something else I've done uh, since purchasing this was to spray it with a bleach water solution twice. 
Uh, it's with like a 10% bleach solution. I sprayed it down and I let it dry and then I sprayed it down, let it dry, and then it's been airing more and more since then. Th it, this has improved greatly. But it has been a couple of weeks we did that. I don't know if you need to do it a couple of weeks, but other things happened, like have happened. So today we decided it's time for it to start the process of moving inside and we have to do that by starting the refinishing process. So stick around, I will show you how Again, that Again, I want to show out. you some of the detail that draws us to this piece. As you can see, it has a very nice little detail here that goes all along the, the top, as you can see here, which is the drawer, and it meets the door. So it creates kind of a picture frame effect. Yeah. It is very well made and it doesn't really have any uh, problem as far as need for repairs or anything like that. It seems to be in very good shape. It has a little bit of damage that we're going to address as we go along. And there are two ways you can do that. We're going to try <coughs> first to re repair and uh, sand the veneer. And if for some reason the sanding damages, we don't really know how thin the veneer is at this moment. Then we, we might have to remove the veneer, but we're going to take you along and see how we're going to attach it. Attack it, not attach it. And here you can see a little bit better the deta detail of the damage on the veneer. Which I cannot really figure out for the life of me what this is from. It almost looked like they had a, a trim or something below because it's a very perfect line, you know. It doesn't seem like a wear or something like that. I suspect that it had some water near the base of this mm -hmm. that might have caused the veneer to peel. Just like you did? Yeah, just like that one. We might end up having to take the veneer off. Let's start the process and see how it goes. We need to remove any veneer that is completely detached. Again, this veneer doesn't worth saving, otherwise we would use glue to try to glue it down. But for our purposes, we have to make sure that we only work with veneer that it is securely attached. So let's, uh, for our purposes, we're going to remove this. All right, and we're going to do thr this throughout the piece, and we will get back to you shortly. So we determined that the damage in the bottom ravine here is too heavy for us to try to repair it, and we are going to start removing it. We plan to paint this so removing the veneer should not be a, a determined factor of what we plan to do and underneath it actually is very nice wood as i see right mm -hmm. so this is as exciting as watching paint dry but we're going to actually we're going relatively fast right yeah. and it still preserves a nice curve of the piece so it is not a, a big issue which, when we purchased it, we knew it was going to be painted. There was never an illusion about trying to preserve the veneer. Really. Even though it does look that if you were to remove the veneer, this could be finished because the wood is actually really good underneath. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I think it's good. A little bit of sanding will remove any remnants of the veneer and the veneer glue. And this part of the repair will be finished. Okay, tell us what you're doing. So a lot of this is loose and so I want to go ahead and take it off, but I don't want it to just tear randomly, so I'm going to score it with this knife. And I'm using this as a straight edge. So that hopefully it'll be a nice clean. I'm actually surprised they veneer this thing because the wood underneath is not bad at all. I think it's just the time frame, the period, that's what they were doing. It was veneer everything. Yeah. Because that was a very popular finish. I mean, this wood is much better than some of the wood you see in furniture today. Mm -hmm. And it's under a veneer. It will probably snap if you... Still leave the edge there if you want. Yeah. See, that's, that's a bit yeah. clean. And then that way when we come back with some filler, it'll be a more. If we had a, a power sander, this piece might have worth taking all the veneer off, but with hand tools that will take forever, right? Mm -hmm. 
meaning that this uh, was in some form of water damage. And uh, you can see there what we think was the water line. And above there you see where it's the only place that the wood, the veneer wood actually held a little bit. So we're going to move along and we'll decide uh, exactly how we're going to address this. So you want to stand it up? Or you're not there yet? Which begs the question, was it like really? We got it from roses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it shouldn't be like that. But A light sanding in all the surfaces will allow the paint we're going to use to adhere to it better. And this is an area you don't really, it doesn't have to be perfect sanding. You're scratching the area so the paint will adhere. That's all you're trying to do. And the paint we're going to use is some pills as a final coat so it seals in whatever is remaining of the over and such before we do a color paint. As you can see, we have put wood putty in the areas that we want to fill and a light sanding will make these areas disappear with the paint. Now you can also use Bondo for this process and this is next to sanding probably the most time consuming aspect of this project. So sanding is probably the most time consuming and putting Bondo or uh, wood putty is the second one. Anything else you would like to add? And you can see other small repairs there. I don't know why I said repairs, but you know. As you can see, this little piece is very well constructed. The, the drawer uses dovetails. And uh, based on what I see here, the detail, they're hand-cut dovetails, not machine-cut dovetails. And the more we work on this piece, the more I wish we were in our shop because I would we have gone a different way in restoring it by taking it all down to wood and staining it, but here it's just not an option for us, unfortunately. What do you think, Elpida? I agree. I mean, everywhere we look, yeah. the craftsmanship and the, the material used, mm -hmm. it is just something you don't see anymore. And this is really solid, the whole piece. Yeah, ev everything. We haven't found anything. The worst quality wood we've found in the whole piece is plywood, which in right. today's standards, it's not even a bad wood, right? No. I mean, they make cabinets out of plywood. That's well, the only wood. The quality of this plywood is still better than a lot of Oh, absolutely, yeah. So. But, yeah, so... So, yeah, if we had the right equipment and the right space, it would definitely be worth it to take the time to strip this down and really get it looking correct, but... Yeah, those curves are amazing. For what we have right now, it's just not an option. And Elpida there, Elpida there is caressing the curves. Is that what you're doing, Elpida? Well, And I think we're looking at a classic example of furniture abuse. You know, this was not taken care of. Right. We'll call the furniture squad. Yeah. The furniture abuse hotline? Yeah. Okay. All right, we were done sanding the piece and uh, using a damp cloth, we did our best to remove all the sawdust away from the furniture in preparation for paint. And because we spare no expense here at the Urban Home Studying Channel, we have very high-tech paint steerers. You can see right there next to the paint can. Because, you know, that's what you do, right? Yeah, you use what you have. And now the kilt, we use kilts because it's a, both a stain and odor uh, sealer. This is not going to be the final color that we're going to apply to the piece, but we are using it at this stage as a, a means of treating the wood, protecting the wood from additional damage and preventing the... Oh, we found the a, a, a actual key instead of, you know... Screwdriver. Screwdriver. So we're, we're getting there, folks. Are you still filming? Yes. Okay, and so because of the odor associated with this thing, we're gonna have to paint every single surface, not just the exterior like you probably normally would on a piece. So even this underside here, Hold on. even this underside here has to be painted. Otherwise the odor from the smoke and the water damage will continue to permeate the house. And that's not cool with me. So. Look at the steering action going.
ready to paint, we're in that state and we're using uh, standard kilts and some people like white so you might see how it will look in a white I'm not one of those people for the record No, we're not going to finish it white but <laughs> I'm just saying And the purpose of the kilt is to remove any stains that could be visible on the final paint and also to, to seal the piece and uh, make it not smell. What is the politically correct term of not smell? Reduce odor. Reduce odor. There, there you go. An odor reducer product. Now, because of the odor, we're going to put kills everywhere in the point in the furniture, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Good. Another short wipe, and we are ready to start with the kills inside. Again, this feels like sacrilege because <laughs> the more we work on this piece, the more I realize how well made it is. But as Alpita pointed out, probably that was the, the norm at the time that it was made. I'm talking about the veneer now. Yeah. But the quality of the, the wood that is under the veneer is surprisingly good. And I, would not, I was not expecting that. Me either. We've seen some really nice grains and stuff. Watch out. I think So the, the painting resumes, let the paint begin. I mean that's the key, you cannot do things above the tools you have available to you. The, the tools don't make the craftsman, but the craftsman is limited by the tools available to him or her. Would you agree with that? Mm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've been saying throughout this project how many things that I don't have with me, but they are back in Kansas, we could have used for this project. Of course, it doesn't help us any. You might need a little more here. Right? Sometimes you have to pull out a little resourcefulness, regardless of how many tools you have. That's true. Well, but for example, the finish paint would have been a lot better if we were using a, a sprayer gun, which we have. Yes, just not here. Time craftsmen didn't have sprayer guns. But we ain't painters. And a very light sanding here will uh, make this damage disappear. I'm going to concentrate on this so I can come back to it and we can see how it ends up. But, um, so stay, stay tuned, it is the, the rear, depending on how you look at the piece, the rear right or left corner. <laughs> so from my location, from my location is the rear right, if you're facing it is the, right, the rear left. Can we make that a little more complicated? I don't think I confuse people enough. Well, you can do your best. I'm trying, but you know. All right, folks. And our creative, innovative, and totally ca cutting edge technology continues as we use a most, uh, I'm, I'm sure no one has ever seen that before, a very expensive device to keep the door open, which is a branch of a tree that we found laying around. So we can continue utilizing resources to the best of our ability. We, we just thought you would like to know that. So here it is. Enjoy. As you can see, even after sanding, the top is, uh, it has a lot of damage. It looks like, wouldn't you think some of it is water damage, like for things spilling on it? Or? So like here's a ring, something that was set on it was wet. There is some water damage from things leaking out, but then there's also probably some darker stuff that was probably like a, you know, fire. Maybe, some maybe a cigarette burn or something yeah. like that? It doesn't have the, like the snaky looking ones that I'm used to, but something like that, yeah. Like there was some sort of heat source on it that really darkened the wood. See, now that would be cool if the veneer would actually hold up to a Shusugi band finish. That would be awesome, but it wouldn't. No.
But I have been impressed with the uh, craftsmanship of the person that built this. Oh yeah, it's been a very, very well made piece. That's been very clear. And we did do due diligence and we look around the piece to make sure that it was not a, a famous uh, person or something, you know, out of a famous uh, workshop. Because we knew we wouldn't do it fair justice. We have seen, right? Not something that none of us likes to do in furniture, but you know, we did buy it for eight dollars, and uh, it, it needed something to make it usable. Right, it couldn't be used the way it was, okay. so we had to do something. All right, folks, and as you can see, we have uh, completed all surfaces of the table are covered with uh, kilts and now we're going to have to let it dry we might decide if we want to do a second coat or not but regardless because of time constraints we have to continue this project in our next episode as you can see the imperfections all but have disappeared and um, when this dries we're going to be able to start finalizing the finish of this piece but so far even though it might not look great at this stage uh, we are very pleased with the outcome all right friends thank you for watching another episode of the urban homesteading channel we hope you did enjoy this episode and if you did please smash that like button if you didn't the other button works as well share like subscribe and comment let us know what else you would like to see in future episodes this episode it might not look uh, great at this moment but we are confident that it's going to look great when we finish it and uh, we're very happy with the progress so far what do you think yeah i mean it's going to come along really nicely uh, because of the constraints of time and having to uh, wait for this to dry before we we finish it uh, we are going to have to do the finishing project next week but you can see probably that the the repairs have disappeared if you go to that corner down there i mean you cannot really see anything so our repairs uh, have uh, finished very very nicely and we are looking forward to finishing it next week. Once again, thank you for staying with us from the Garage Wizard, Mrs. Wizard and Alpida and of course the Urban Homesteading Channel will bid you a great week. We're going to see you soon. Farewell friends.